You know, I'm always looking for a good time to, to do videos and either it's raining outside or I have doggies walking around the kitchen or people are homesick or sneezing or coughing or phones are ringing. I think what probably people would tell me who do YouTube videos is there is no perfect time. You just have to get on with it. So I'm going to get on with it. And today I want to talk a little bit about some LED strobes that come from Firehouse Technologies. I like lights. In fact, I love lights. I love lights, especially at night. I'm fascinated by them. I always have been. I think there's a whole science behind marketing with lights. And if you don't think that's true, take a look at Vegas. But blue lights at night, red lights at night, green lights at night can be very fascinating. I especially like red and blue lights. And I think this comes from our primary Christmas tree we had as a kid. It was one of those like silver metallic trees and my dad loved to put blue um, Christmas tree bulbs on there and we'd have blue lights and then we had one of those old-fashioned color wheels that would spin in a circle and it would shine red and blue and green lights up on the tree and I could sit literally for hours and just be mesmerized by that. Now to be completely transparent these lights I'm talking about from Firehouse Technologies came from Amazon.com. Firehouse doesn't sponsor me. They don't know I exist. They don't know I even use their lights. So I just wanted to be clear on that up front. Just a little information on these lights. Fully charged, they're supposed to last four to five hours. And honestly, I haven't tried to run one down to see how long that's true. They weigh uh, 4.5 grams each, which is not very heavy. A regular paper clip tips the scale at 0 0.5 grams so you can figure a 4 gram light is about 8 paper clips. It has a 70 milliamp hour uh, LiPo battery and if you compare that to the Phantom which these lights fly on it has about a 57 80 milliamp hour battery in it. Scratch that 58 70 milliamp hour that's close. So in order to fly commercially, you have to pass your FAA Part 107 exam. Um, this is true even if you want to post your videos on YouTube and then you monetize your videos. Not doing so uh, creates a risk of the FAA uh, getting your phone number and giving you a call. Part of the regulations state that you can't fly after Civil Twilight unless you have a Part 107.29 waiver or certificate of waiver. There are many uh, provisions for this waiver but one of them is that your aircraft has to be lit so that it can be seen from three statute miles away and that doesn't mean that you can see it from three statute miles away although you better be able to but that other craft can see it from three miles away and if you think about it they're not talking about craft that are going underneath you it's the airplanes passing over you or the helicopters they have to be able to see you at night I chose to get my FAA part uh, 107.29 waiver because I did want to fly at night. I do want to do commercial work and I do want to dot all my I's and cross all my, all my T's. To get the waiver though I had to be able to verbalize to the FAA how I was going to meet every step of the provisions. Now some people who want to do this are going to require some help to get it done and in fact I had uh, a lawyer offer to do it for me for the princely sum of $750. I choose to believe I'm not entirely ignorant and felt like I could probably put this together on my own. And I was right. The FAA did require clarification on two points that I made, uh, but they allowed me to do that and I sent it back and within a week I had my approval. And I wanted the waiver because as I stated before, I'm fascinated with the lights at night and the opportunity to get up and get some uh, video or photographs of these lights was almost uh, irrepressible to me and I thought the clients would like to see maybe what their properties could possibly look like at night. So how do I light my Phantom 4 Pro? Um, first off I went to Lowe's and I got some little velcro strips and I trimmed them down and attached them to the uh, Phantom 4 and trust me your little four or five gram uh, LED strobes aren't going to fall off. They stick on very, very well. I promised the FAA that I would have green lights that were on the port side or the left side um, that would be visible from the left and red lights on the starboard side. 
one on top of the craft, one on the side of the craft for each of those. And then I stated I would have a white light on the aft of the craft, not so much for other traffic to be able to see the drone, but for me to be able to track it. And I'll tell you what, that white light was a good idea. My premise was, and they accepted this, was that if the craft was flying directly away from me, I would be able to see the white light. And I have taken it out to two miles and can clearly see that white light. Um, you do have to get up three, four hundred feet from that distance, and I can't really think of any time I'll be out uh, doing a job at that distance, but I just wanted to see if I could see the light. Uh, the next premise I made was that if I rotated the craft to the right, I would be able to see red lights. If I rotated it to the left, I would be able to see green lights. And if I rotated it straight at me, I wouldn't see any lights. And the reason for that is I chose not to put any lights on the front, especially on the bottom of the Phantom 4, because they were really going to interfere with the camera if I did that. And one thing about that white light on the aft of the craft, when I was out at two miles, I could take my eyes off of the craft and look down and look back up and instantly reacquire the craft. Try that during the day, it's impossible. So why do I like these lights? Uh, several reasons, number one, I could find them. I actually did quite a bit of research on Amazon and on the internet for good lights. And I like these because the battery's attached to it and it has a four to five hour uh, life of the battery. It's very, they're very, very bright. And I don't have to wire them into my craft. I noticed several of the other ones out there, you had to take the wires and run them in, into your craft and hook them up. Uh, there's another couple that come with a battery that's external that you can mount on your craft. So I'm not saying these are the only good lights out there. I'll bet you uh, other people who may be watching this are going, well, my lights work just as good. Bravo, put it in the comments. Let us know what works well because unless you can meet this requirement, you might as well not ask for a 107.29 waiver. You won't get it. If I had to have a criticism, and I might as well, uh, it would be that these really don't come with any instructions. Now that's not to say there's no instructions on their internet site, and yes, I did stumble across them, and yes, they're quite good. Uh, but just in package, you get the little LED strobe and a recharging uh, USB thing micro USB thing. Um, my dogs hear something out there. And if you like me, you want some easy to read instructions. I have a basset hound with long nails and she's walking around the kitchen. So if you see her or hear her, sorry, but family life, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, it turns out that these lights are really pretty easy to operate. If you want to check how much power is in them, you hold down the little black button and let go and it'll blink three times for fully charged and then either one or two times as the charge goes down. In order to turn the light on, you hold the black button down for a second or s In order to turn it on, you hold the black button down for a second or so and it will blink and then take your finger off and it'll start to strobe. And to turn it off, you just do the reverse. Um, Another criticism I would have is that this little black button is a little black button. It's underneath the plastic and don't cut the plastic off if you want the battery to stay on your, uh, on your strobe. The plastic that goes around it is intentionally there. I almost cut it off the first one I had and I would have wasted $32. So it'd be nice if the button had a little more tactile feel to it. You really have to kind of get with your fingernail to really tell you pressed it. Um, but I think that's kind of a minor criticism. So when you want to recharge it, you hook it up to the charging cable up to your computer. And when you first hook it up, you'll get quick blinks. And that shows that it needs to be charged and in fact it's charging. And when it's done, you'll get a slower, longer blink. That means you can take it off and store it away. So there you go. I have no doubt these little guys were cheap to make. I have no doubt that Firehouse Technologies didn't pay a ransom to get them. Um, and I paid $32 a piece. I think you can buy them bulk 
but when I first started buying them, I had no firm idea how I was going to use them. And it turns out, like I said, I've got two reds, two greens, and a white. And then I have replacements for each of those in case of failure. I'm a big redundancy fan, as you'll see when I do my everyday uh, carry video. So they did cost me about $32 a piece. They weren't cheap, but I consider them a business expense. And without them, I could not have uh, gotten my 107.29 waiver. I hope this was informative, not too long. If you um, enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and share it. If you'd like some more quick videos on the Part 107 process, if you're interested in getting your certification to become a remote pilot for small unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, ask me questions. I'll answer them as I can. Um, quite often I'm busy working at the clinic, so I have to get this other stuff done when I can, but I'll certainly try to get to it. There's a lot of stuff out there on it already. A lot of it's very good stuff, uh, stuff I learned from. But if I can add anything to it, I would be glad to. So once again, thanks for watching this. You don't know how much I appreciate it. You really don't know how much I appreciate it. And we'll talk later.